from there. Edward, thank yeah. you very much. Well, join us now is North Dakota Republican Senator Kevin Kramer. Senator, we're glad to have you with us. We've got this dysfunctional family problem, apparently. I think the debt ceiling negotiation adds to that. Look, people do not feel good about this economy. They're looking for some hope. Is there anything uh, McCarthy can do in this negotiation with President Biden to give people hope that our fiscal house can get back in order? Well, I think there is, actually. And, and I wish every American could have watched the National Prayer Breakfast this morning where President Biden um, gave one of the better speeches I've heard him give in a long time. It was short, it was personal, and it was affirmative. It, it was encouraging. And, and, and I hope he carries that spirit into the further negotiations with, with Speaker McCarthy. I actually believe that this divided government is the greatest opportunity to restore confidence in, in our system. And it all depends on how the people that are negotiating uh, behave themselves and how they talk. It's already good news that they had one meeting and that they're planning a second meeting. When just a week ago, that, will, that seemed like it was you know, years and years away, if ever. Uh, although I don't think most people believe that, that that was a tenable position for the president to take, the we'll never negotiate position. I think that they have this opportunity to restore some confidence just by having the meetings and talking about a solution. Senator, it's interesting. A lot of this excess spending has been inflationary inherently. Yes. I think outside of Washington yesterday, we had some other big news with Fed Chairman Jay Powell hinting, though, that a lot of maybe the peak inflation was behind us, that he's sensing a lot of finally disinflationary forces on the horizon. From your constituents, from the people you speak to, are they still feeling the huge effects of inflation or are they feeling like maybe the worst is behind them as well? Well, no, they're definitely feeling inflation, and they're feeling it in pretty significant places. Obviously, the price of groceries and food, essential, the price of energy, which North Dakota produces both energy and food, so we have some people on the commodity side of that formula that actually you know, benefit somewhat from, from these inflationary forces. However, um, I do think there is a, a growing confidence that things could get better, but the biggest thing to me is not so much about what what the Fed does next, because I think the Fed, they got into it late, they came on strong, now they're lightening up. I think they're sending maybe some of the right signals, certainly to the markets, but as I say, stock markets are as emotional as a new bride. But at the real, at the, at, at the home front, um, people are, are still skeptical, but a little bit more optimistic than they were before. And I think, that, again, it gets back to this divided government, this opportunity to govern. But here's the to me the big thing, what Congress has to do, and it gets back to those negotiations, is we need to do our part to reduce inflation mm -hmm. on the supply side of the ledger. And this is what created the problem in the first place, the spending spree, the free money, the, the, the millennials that, that uh, you know, find it easy to not work. I listened to the previous show. Um, and, and suddenly um, people have more money than, than they have things that they can buy. And we need to restore the things they can buy. Yeah, uh, Senator Kramer, you're talking about some policy issues issues here. And when we talk about inflation, I'm a little bit concerned about the longer term picture because I think of the energy patch and I think of the fact that right. we're not producing more oil here in this country right now and that we may see oil prices and gas prices rise again as we go into the summer. And that could be a problem or a little thorn in Jerome Powell's side. Having said that, also within the space, the White House walked back and wanted to clarify the fact that it didn't want to ban, um, you know, gas stoves anymore. But now the yeah. Department of Energy wants to introduce new regulations on the production of these kinds of um, utilities on gas and electric stoves. We're talking about more regulation from an administration um, that has already imposed so much. Is this going to help or hurt the current situation that we're in? No, it's, it's definitely going to hurt. And, and I'd add to that, and of course, you've covered this issue for years and, and, and do it very, very well. But they, just this week, the administration has canceled two critical mining projects in the United States, one in Alaska and one next door to my state in Minnesota. And, and these, are, these are mines that, can, that, that have critical minerals and, and the types of things in the supply chain for clean energy that they, they tout. So they're all in on electric vehicles, but they're not in, in fact, they're all out on helping the supply chain come here to the United States of America, which could create jobs, again, provide opportunity, grow the supply side of our economy. And this disconnect in their economic model, I think, is, is it going to be a perpetual problem, no matter how high interest rates gets and, get and, and, and what inflation, how re inflation responds. Senator, speaking of the upper Midwest, I want to get your take on this. The Air Force slamming a proposed Chinese-owned corn mill in North Dakota. 
saying it would be a significant national security threat. The Grand Forks mayor says he plans to stop the development of the mill. Listen to this. Well, I think, you know, obviously you know, there's going to be economic benefits for something like a corn mill. And we went through a long review process and we finally got a letter from the Air Force just saying this is a national security concern. And it was just time to say no. I mean, not in Grand Forks. So it was a long process, but uh, I don't think uh, in the end, if that's a, that's a, if that's a threat, it's not going to move forward. So, Senator, this is 12 miles from an Air Force base. It's the Fufeng Group, apparently strong ties to the Chinese government. It got through. It appears to be happening. Tell us about the risk and then what can be done if indeed this really is a big national security risk. Well, I know the project very well, and I know the Grand Forks Air Force Base very well, of course, and have been involved in this for a year. And it, it was never a good idea, and I'm grateful that the, that the uh, Air Force finally stated as much, rather unambiguously, I might add. Um, it's unfortunate that the community had to go through this process. However, the good news in all of it is the right outcome, and more importantly, I think it signals to the rest of the country that... that, that, that you know, the, the uh, national defense interests of our country supersede uh, economic opportunities, especially when it comes to the Chinese Communist Party and their investment. Because remember, not only is this 12 miles from a very sensitive Air Force base, but it's also part of a, a critical supply chain, and that is, of course, food. And if we haven't learned yet that we need to sort of decouple ourselves from at least our, our, our food supply and our energy supply and our critical mineral supply and our pharmaceutical supply chains, uh, the, these critical supply chains from China, uh, we haven't learned anything. So I think it was, it was tough on the community, but I think it sends a, a model nationwide in how we can handle some of these investments in the future. Senator Kevin Kramer, we so appreciate your time today. Thank you, sir. Great to be with you. Thank you.